Hi, everyone. I'm Catherine. Uh, he told you a little bit about me already, um, but this is my second super conference, um, and I'm super excited to be here. So I'm going to tell you all about Sprite Lights, which is LED body art. You can see them on me. And if you've been lucky enough, there's little ones floating around that are highly unreliable but super fun. So what exactly is a Sprite Light? Ooh. There it goes. Uh, let's play the video. So these are um, LED body art. They're less than one millimeter thick. Um, they are body safe light up temporary tattoos that combine art, flex PCBs, screen printed batteries, which I'll tell you more about, um, and body safe adhesive tape. Think medical grade 3M tape. So super slick. Helps if you hold the remote the correct way. There we go. There we go. Inspiration. So I grew up in the 80s, as I suspect a lot of us did. Um, and I also grew up in Silicon Valley, helping my dad make stuff in his garage. Um, and uh, I'm pretty certain that, like most of us who grew up in the 80s, we were destined to glow in the dark. Um, and I wanted to find a way to do that that was not as intense as body modification, which, no judgment, super rad, super scary for me. So I wanted a way that was less permanent, but looked as slick and as integrated as maybe, you know, integrated LEDs underneath the skin might look. Uh, I started in a really weird territory of like painting latex onto um, like a plastic uh, backing. And then what I would do while it was still painted on there is I would, and kind of tacky, is I would stick LEDs on it and then hand solder really terrible wire onto the back of it and then hook up a battery to it and pray. Um, and that's what you can kind of see right here. It was really labor intensive. It was bulky. Uh, people have latex allergies. Um, if you had any kind of melatonin in your skin that was different than the latex color I was using, that was not going to work for you. This color didn't even work for me. Um, and so it was a good way to start prototyping, but definitely not the way I was going to go overall. So I started looking at ways to create um, 3D printed films or synthetic skin. And these uh, were with flex filament, um, and they were like 0.5 millimeters, less than a millimeter thick that I was trying to print on onto my uh, board platform, which as you can imagine, very difficult, especially when flex you know, filament was kind of new. This was back in 2017, 2018, and so they, there has been a lot of progress with those type of filaments. Uh, but there were still problems with this because it didn't look super transparent on the skin. It still had kind of a white film to it. Um, okay, if you're a pale moon child like me, not great if you're not. Um, and then it also kept pulling around the edges, right? So it would stick up and you could really see the edge of where the artwork was and everything like that. Um, I was also playing around with uh, LED matrices for a while before I started going to a more artistic route, which is what you can see there on the other side under 3D molds with silicone. So what I would do is I would print uh, a, a piece of artwork like line work and then I would, in that mold, I would paint black silicone, then clean up the rest of it, then put clear silicone over it, flip it over, and then in like a coloring book, in those outlines, I would put the colored uh, silicone in it, and then there would be a circuit board just kind of underneath laying under the back. This was cool because you could get clear silicone on the top of it, um, and that would allow you to have like any skin tone underneath it. I wanted this to be really accessible to a lot of different people. Uh, labor intensive, insanely labor intensive in order to paint the artwork and make it really beautiful. Um, and then also, if you've ever worked with silicone, the only thing that sticks to silicone is silicone. So you had to use a silicone-based adhesive and like you had the risk of like electronics sliding out from underneath it and it was extremely problematic. But I stayed with this for a long time because it was working. Um, I also did some R&D while I was trying to figure out flexible circuits. Um, for a while, I thought I needed incredibly flexible circuits. People move. We dance, we, we move all around, we bend over, we have joints. Um, and I thought I needed extremely stretchy circuits. I didn't. I just needed flexible circuits. But uh, Galistan, if you've never heard of this before, is a metal compound that stays liquid at room temperature 
or especially body temperature. So if it was sitting against your skin, it would always be liquid. And so what I did um, in the middle of that time where we couldn't leave our house, uh, I went into my driveway and I smelted metal. Because what else are you going to do when you're stuck at home, aside from drink wine? Um, and so I have a video here that shows how this circuit is going to move and flex. And it was insanely hard to make. Um, but these are self-healing because it's all metal liquid inside. And so you have this trapped in between two layers of silicone. Um, and then you've got your power source down at the bottom. And once you turn it on, uh, you've got this circuit that you can stretch. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And this was very hard to do because what sticks to silicone? Silicone. What doesn't wet silicone? Gallium. Galistan. Literally anything. Um, and so this was very hard to paint on. Um, and also it was really hard to get the components to stay in place. Shortly after this video, I broke it. <laughs> so, uh, but still really cool. And also, you can do it at home apparently. So when I found out I needed flexible circuits, not stretchy circuits, um, I started looking at homemade copper circuits. And uh, if you have a cricket or a silhouette or any other kind of cutter, you can cut out your own copper traces. This is copper tape that you can buy on Amazon. Um, it is hard and it will dull your, your cutter, your blades really quickly. Um, and also it will like pull or tear or get caught up in your, in your cutter pretty easily. But if you fine tune your settings, you can cut pretty thin copper traces and make your own flexible circuits by getting like a, like a plastic that's heat resistant, um, that is still clear. And then you just stick your, your cutout circuits on it and then you get a griddle from Walmart. <laughs> And then you, uh, you put on your solder paste, you put on your components, and then you watch it very carefully until the solder turns shiny, and then you turn it off and take it off immediately. So that was my methodology for making at-home copper circuits, which you can also do. Uh, and there we go, and this is so you can see how thin and how flexible and how clear it was. Very cool. And so I did this for a really long time. Also, <laughs> batteries. Uh, everyone loves to know what these batteries are. Uh, and it took, I started this project, I want to say back in 2017, very late 2017, and then really got going in 2018. Uh, and I have learned so much about batteries and it only took, you know, until this year for battery solutions to catch up with my dream. Uh, and so don't give up if there isn't a solution out there yet. And so I looked at rechargeable batteries um, like lithium ion and that type of thing, and you can get them pretty thin. Um, and sometimes you can even get them flexible, though that's pretty rare. Uh, but they were expensive. You needed recharging circuits, which are always bulky um, and not ideal to have underneath also. Um, and then I also looked at coin cells. Coin cells are small. They have three volts. Voltages, um, sometimes they're rechargeable, but they're still not as flat as you would like them when you put something against the skin. So, let's talk about Zenergy. Zenergy is a company that is UK based and they have a factory in China. Um, they are flexible, thin batteries um, that can be made in different form factors. I chose circular. They didn't have one yet, so they were super psyched to create a circular one. Um, and they are made using a similar compound to like what is in AA batteries. Uh, this means they never get hot. They, you can cut them and you can puncture them. They do not leak. Um, and sometimes they'll even just stay on, which is fun. So extremely body safe, because uh, I was really really nervous about putting like a rechargeable battery right up against my skin and possibly exploding one day. Uh, nobody wants that. If anyone has had a, bat like, had a phone battery expand on them, you know how terrifying it is. Uh, you think you're going to die. And so this was a really good solution. Um, it does mean that they are single use. That is the trade-off for this, for them being extremely safe and extremely thin and very flexible. So the final design, let's talk about that. So you have your artwork sticker. Um, that's what you see on me and that's what you see right there. And so this is any kind of sticker. And I ran a Kickstarter um, and I partnered with Mates Stickers who gave me a lovely discount on printing these, which was very nice. Um, the, this is a compass design and you can see that it has like clear edges around and then the, in the middle is like the white ink and whatnot um, to, to make it kind of seamless against the skin. And you could have you know, uneven edges, like you could have an octopus and have the tentacles coming out and not have a border around it. 
That is a flexible circuit board um, printed at or created at JLC PCB. I did the design for it, very tiny LEDs, and then I just pointed at the battery, um, which is right there. That was before I had the circular maids. Circle, circle ones made. There we go. <laughs> and as you can see, they're flexible and very thin. And then you have the adhesive layer. This is a hyperallergenic medical tape that you can um, have one side is kind of like an acrylic based adhesive for like the circuit board, so it's very strong. And then the back is, um, is very skin safe and friendly. And from there, uh, I was using copper tape, but I moved on to more of a fabric conductive tape. And that is what connects the battery pads to the battery itself. So when you see these, you pull a little tab, you press it together, and that makes the contact between the battery board and the tape. Yeah, just like that. You would just pull and press. And so, there we go. Lessons learned. Um, it's possible to learn anything online. <laughs> that is, and especially if you have great Discord communities and great conferences like this and great people that you meet. Um, I didn't know how to 3D print when I started this. I certainly did not know circuit board design. I had no idea how to smelt metal. Um, I didn't even really know about the properties of silicone. I, I learned so much throughout all of this and a lot of it was self-taught and like a lot of people helped me throughout. So reach out to your community and if you dream something, you can definitely make it. Technology isn't also always caught up to what you are thinking of, right? So those batteries didn't exist until this year, um, and who knows if they're going to continue to exist. It depends on the demand of the market. So don't give up. If something isn't there yet, just keep prototyping so you're ready when it is. Um, and then try everything, even the silly stuff, maybe especially the silly stuff. Smelt metal in your driveway, buy a griddle and burn some electronics. Like, have a good time out there. That's what, that's what we're here for. And then what's next? I get this question a lot, like, what do you want to do with these? Are they going to consumers? I did a Kickstarter. Um, I've won some contests and whatnot with it. And uh, what I think is going to happen next is figuring out mass production. Right now, I do get the boards made. I get the artwork made. But it is still me sitting in my living room watching, you know, funny movies like Practical Magic and, like, sitting there layering everything together by hand, um, so then you have a nice little package thing. That's not sustainable, um, so maybe a Kickstarter in 2025 to mass produce, that would be great. Um, I want uh, a screen pr printed battery design that is not necessarily that circle, so it can go behind more different types of artwork. Uh, and then I want to partner with companies for like events and promotions. So maybe at like a super conference, like you could have the Hackaday logo as a Sprite light, or you could like go to a movie premiere and get one of them, or you could have it in a swag bag. And that, being able to mass produce them and get the big clients like that, is what's going to allow me to produce small batches in order to work with like local artists and do collabs and things like that. So that's really what I think is next for, for Sprite Lights and LED wearables um, and body art that looks like body modifications. So, and that's it. <laughs> And I think maybe just a couple minutes for questions. Yes. Have you had any limitations come about by trying to do like larger designs? Is there anything different about sort of like these materials when you they cover a larger surface area? Yeah, that's a great question. So he, uh, if you didn't hear, is there any kind of limitations I've hit with larger designs? Um, when you cover a larger area, you have to think about it flexing and multiple multiple different directions. And it's not that the circuit boards can't do that, because they can, but it, is the artwork still going to look good? Is it going to crinkle? Is it going to crease? Or is it going to look strange as it tries to go around a curve of your body? So that is the biggest limitation of just conforming to how somebody actually looks and where you place it. As far as like power or, and whatnot, no, not really. Because the LEDs are consumed so little uh, that you can get a lot of them on there still. Um, right here in the hat. Have you thought about using um, non-storage uh, battery uh, devices like RFID coils? Or yeah, so the, the battery stuff is a little bit of a newer area for me. Um, so I have been exploring, um, but if there's people who know more about this than I do who want to come talk to me, that would be great. <laughs> uh, in the glasses. Uh, in the other glasses. <laughs> That, that was not good. <laughs> I 
have thought about that. Um, I've thought about a lot of things that that stuff could do. And I've also thought about, in general, um, sprite lights, you know, LED body art, being able to involve different types of sensors, right? Like, I've, I've thought about, like, what if it could pulse to music? What if it could do some kind of, like, health tracking? What if it could do, like, reactions based on your temperature and stuff like that? So I think both the flexible circuits and the Galistan, and then also just in general, something like this has a lot of potential for other things, for sure. Um, all the way in the back. Oh, that's great. So how long do the batteries last? So um, this will run at six to eight hours at full brightness. Um, and I have ones that have stayed on for over eight days, um, just the, like diminishing brightness. Uh, anyone who got one of my little giveaways and had it in their hotel room last night and could not turn it off, I'm very sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so that's a great question. So perspiration, because of the type of tape that I'm using is a medical grade tape, um, they have luckily solved that problem for me. So I haven't seen these get sweat off. Um, I do have a, an adhesive that is the same thing that you use for like stick on bras if you're a lady in this room or know a lady. Um, and uh, that was susceptible to perspiration, but they also are probably the key to when I figure out recharging because that is reusable, washable over time. These I like to say are water resistant. Um, I'm not like they're probably honestly waterproof. You could probably go dunk yourself in a pool, but I'm not condoning it. <laughs> uh, let's just do two more questions, then I'll wrap it up. Um, uh, the other person who's sitting next to the person with the glasses. <laughs> Yeah, so Zenergy I was introduced to after I won on the Tech Fashion Design Challenge. One of the, one of the prizes was getting introduced to folks. And so um, they're a newer company and very excited about trying new things. That's why the Circle Battery was new for them. Um, but they have talked about how they could do interesting and unique designs that might conform to like different odd shapes for sure. Yep. And then last one, um, I saw the hand all the way in the back with the blue. And I'll be around, so if you want to talk to me after, it's fine. Can you please play that video of the Dallas Center? Yeah, I'll play it one more time, and we'll end on uh, a crazy high. How's that? Um, let's go back. I would love to. Oh, technology, come on. One more. You can do it. Oh, okay. There you go. But you have to cheer for it when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone.